Okay, what we're going to do here is build a fairly good sized Faraday cage out of this old shelf. You can see it needs some repair, some adjustments, but yes, that's what we're going to do, and we're going to share it with you. A little progress on our shelves. We shortened it a little bit so our screening will work well. Over here, you'll see a plastic bottom. We found that from an old shelf. We're going to put that on the bottom. We've got the basic shelf done. You can see we threw in that plastic piece from an old shelf. It's a great base. We even screwed it in. It's all level. Ready to go. We've got to create a door now, a swinging door. We have been building the outer door. You can see here, it's not attached yet. But uh, we'll be screening all this here in a little bit. We'll show you progress on that. We're going to start wrapping. This is the very beginning. We're using aluminum screening and you can see it comes in a three foot width and that's a 25 foot roll. Should be enough to wrap this thing. I've got the first top half wrapped. Notice there's no wrapping where the door is going to go. I've mounted the door hinges. I wanted to show you something before we finish putting it all together. Notice that extra flap of screening. Well, it comes from the door. What we'll do is attach it here. That way we have a continuous loop, at least on the hinge side. We've got the latches on. You can see they're just simple little latches. We've got good connection there, but as you go down, you'll notice because of our white plastic piece at the bottom, we've got a little bit of a gap there. But we have an idea for a solution, and we'll share it with you when we get to that point. But two latches, really simple to do. Now we've got to cut pieces for the top and bottom, and so our seams together. Due to a, a bit of a gap, we create a puffy gasket of the screening so when the door closes it will completely crush and make that connection. Also, we have these gaps here. So what we're doing is sewing with this wire here. It's very thin copper wire that's been coated. You can get this at Radio Shack for projects. The wire looks kind of like that. And we're just sewing it together. I'm no tailor, but this took care of the gap, sewing in between. And you see, no more gap exists, fully contact. Now I need to do this back side, as you can see, quite the gap. Sewing that is next. It took two of us, one on each side, to push the wire through back and forth. And yes, we're not tailors, but it closed that gap made a full connection. Looking good to me. Got one more edge to do, but it's starting to rain, so we're going to stop for the day. We have a basic setup ready. I have it grounded to house ground. Don't worry, it's only ground. Which house grounds really aren't normally the best. We have some maybe some minor repairs to do or improvements. But here we go. Radio. Now notice. Fine on the radio. Okay, go ahead and close the door. We're just going to hold it shut. No radio. Open the door. No tricks. 
It's working. Just to show you how close the radio station is. That's it. That's its tower. Is its tower again. And we're basically going to take a walk over. Keep the camera on. That's how close they are. What we think should be a psychological, a psychological disorder. This is. What, what do you? What's your disorder? Just holding the door closed. It's time to start with the grounding. What you see here is an eight-foot-long ground pole. Some copper, solid copper wire. You can use braided, but solid does do better. And of course, the coupling that's going to tie that to the pole. This is going to take some doing. It takes time to pound that in the ground. So we'll check in when we're part way through. One trick that I did learn is that this little coupling here, put it on the pole before you start pounding. Because once you pound it and the top starts to mushroom, you're never going to get that on. Put it on before you start hammering away. We're going to get started here. You notice I've got a ladder there. It's going to take to start the pounding as you bound it farther in the ground. You can get rid of the ladder. Do note, I put on that piece there Put it on before you start pounding, because once you start pounding, you'll never get it on. Tighten as tight as you can. One issue is, as it vibrates, it will loosen. You'll have to tighten it up a couple of times during your efforts. And don't forget, safety glasses. You can see now, I'm halfway. Not too bad. Been really lucky this time. When I've done it before, this comes loose, and you have to retighten it. This hasn't come loose yet, so I will be moving it up higher, because... You only need a couple inches above ground when you're done. We're almost there. Had to move the uh, clamp up. It's in. There it is. Now, we'll run the ground wire, that solid wire I showed you, into the shed and hook up the Faraday cage. What I've done is flattened out the hammer the end of the copper wire so I can screw that along the wall of the uh, Faraday cage. I've drilled three holes and I'll be attaching it along that post. We've uh, screwed it to the uh, cage. Now we're going to install the cage and run the cabling out to the ground post. It is installed on the inside. You can see I drilled a hole out of the shed Ran the uh, copper wire out, and we'll connect that to the ground post. Now it comes out, comes down, and connects to my ground post. And that's complete. Next, we're going to properly pack the Faraday cage. I'm not going to show you all that. As I pack the Faraday cage, there's a good chance that any movement, earthquake or heavy winds, could cause items to bump into the screening. So I'm actually going to pack the radio equipment and electronics in milk crates. They fit nicely on the shelves, and any movement, just the plastic will touch. It should give me enough insulated value 
that it won't harm